Hello, and welcome to this Fairfield University Innovative Research Symposium Spotlight. I'm Dr. Michael Andrejcik, Associate Professor in the Psychology Department, and today I have the pleasure of introducing Emma Antoine Portnari. Emma began as a supervised research student in my lab in the spring of 2019, helping me to design and conduct studies related to intergroup relations, implicit bias, and the connection between empathy and helping behavior. And after that supervised research experience, Emma went on to design and conduct her own very interesting independent research project, and she's been kind enough to offer to share that project with us today. Emma, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Andrzejczyk. Happy to be here today. All right, well, we're proud to have you here to show uh, your great work. Uh, let's start with a presentation of your research, and then we'll follow up with a short conversation. Yes, definitely. Um, so my project was designed to further investigate a phenomenon known as the pro-black bias. And this is a social bias in which people demonstrate uh, bias favoring blacks over whites in social judgment tasks. And while trends in society, as well as the majority of evidence in the psychological literature suggests that people will often show bias against blacks and in favor of whites, more recent research has actually challenged this notion. Um, using a test called the social judgment bias task, researchers, ax and colleagues observed a social judgment bias favoring black applicants over white applicants for admission into an academic honor society. They termed this bias in favor of blacks the pro-black bias, However, this bias has only been shown to be within the context of honor society selection. And thus, I was curious to see how widespread this bias might be. During the time that I was designing this research, I was actually taking a class called Gender, Race, and Ethnic Relations. And in the course, we were learning how there are higher incarceration rates for black offenders versus white offenders. And some further research that I found uh, demonstrated that black offenders often get sentenced to harsher sentences than white offenders for crimes of the same severity. And thus, I was curious to see if the pro-black bias would also be prevalent in a criminal sentencing domain. We viewed this research really as exploratory research, and thus we weren't sure what exactly the outcomes would be. However, we predicted that if in fact the pro-black bias was prevalent in this domain, that participants would sentence fewer black offenders to long criminal sentences than white offenders for crimes of the same severity. To adapt our research to a criminal sentencing domain, we recruited 123 participants through the Fairfield University Undergraduate Psychology Student Participant Pool, and then we were actually tasked with uh, transforming the honor society selection task to a criminal sentencing domain. And thus we created the criminal sentencing judgment bias task. In this task, we created 64 unique offender profiles and we built 32 of them to be more severe and 32 to be less severe. As well, we varied the race of each profile, assigning half of the profiles to offender profiles that were black pictures and half the profiles to pictures that were of white people. Um, and this allowed us to make sure that there were an equal number of black and white offenders who committed less severe and more severe crimes. As well, participants also completed a measure of their perception of performance on the criminal sen sentencing judgment bias task, and as well measures of implicit and explicit bias. So participants were told that they would be tasked with taking on the role of a judge who would have to perform sentencing decisions for offenders of different crimes. They were presented with the screen like this. So they were shown each offender profile individually, provided with a picture of the offender, and then criteria that described the severity of their crime. As well, they were then tasked with either choosing the short sentence or long sentence for each profile. Overall, our biggest result that we found was the fact that there is no prevalence of the pro-black bias in the criminal sentencing domain. Um, but one interesting finding that we did find was the fact that participants were pretty good at judging their performance. Um, and so what exactly does this mean? Um, so while our results suggested that there's no pro-black bias in the criminal sentencing domain, they do suggest that people were partially aware of whether or not they did show a pro-black bias while completing the task. And further, our results suggest that the pro-black bias might not be especially widespread and that at the very least it is in fact domain specific. We did have a few limitations to our study. We found an overall lower accuracy rate on our task than in the previous research. And we also found uh, concerns with the generalizability of our study as our participant pool was only college students. 
Thus, going forward, we've actually decided to address these issues and run our study again, and we're focusing specifically on changes that will address our low accuracy rates and the generalizability, and we're excited to see what our uh, future research will find. Great. Yeah, thanks for that uh, rundown. Um, a couple of questions uh, that, I, that I had for you as I was listening to this and that we've spoken about a little bit before, but uh, where, where do you go with these findings? It's very interesting, but how do you, how do you see this as you know, really contributing to, uh, to the literature. Yeah, definitely. So it's really interesting. Um, in particular, it kind of indicates that we might need to be more precise when we're talking about bias for and against minority groups. So rather than asking, is there bias, we might have to ask in what specific domains does bias exist? Um, this insight in itself is really important since people always sort of assumed that regardless of the domain, people will show bias against minority groups and in favor of majority groups. So it really changed the way, changes the way that theoretical models should look at bias. Um, as I mentioned before, we also are making changes to our criminal sentencing task, as despite the fact that our original task did function pretty well, uh, we want to make the changes to improve the task. And as I mentioned, we're in the process of gathering that new data, um, looking at a larger sample of adults and making sure that our task um, fixes the limitations that we had before. And where, I know one thing you said as well was that you, uh, maybe one limitation is that you're looking at college students here largely in this first uh, study. So wh where are you gonna get the participants for this, uh, this new study that you're designing? Yeah, so we're actually using a software. Um, it's called Amazon MTurk, and it's an online software uh, where you can upload your research, and it's able to recruit um, people online who are interested in completing the study. So it allows to get a larger demographic um, and a more representative sample of the general population. Great. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so thanks for the rundown. Um, one other question that I that I had for you, how, the project itself is very interesting. I think you did a nice job sharing that with us, but how do you see this as fitting with your, your goals, your professional goals going forward? Yeah, definitely. So engaging in this research project, I've gained skills that will be essential in helping me um, with my professional goals. I'm a psych major and I also am a minor in marketing. So I really look to combine these passions into a career and pursue a job in marketing. This independent research project has had a direct connection to those professional goals in the marketing world as the overarching focus of the project is on attitudes and behavior, which are really two key components a marketer must understand to successfully market to a target consumer. So also through my studies of social judgment bias, I've furthered my understanding of attitudes and behaviors and the different contexts and the facts that influence them. Further, I've also developed some really valuable skills that will be vital for my future job, whether this is how to conduct research, how to communicate information via different mediums, how to problem solve, how to take an evidence-based approach, and really how to understand the relationship between various phenomenon. And further, I've also just really improved my project management skills. So sadly, as my time at Fairfield approaches a close, um, I do look forward to utilizing the skills I've gained during this experience to help me achieve those professional goals post-grad. Great. Perfect. Uh, so another thing I like to always ask students about almost any project, can you tell us maybe one particularly uh, interesting or surprising or challenging thing that you encountered as you uh, worked through this project? Yeah, so one of the most challenging aspects I actually found while working on this project was adapting the academic honor society judgment bias task to our domain of criminal sentencing. While the overall premise was rather straightforward and researchers who made this honor society task provided a set of instructions on how to create your own judgment bias task, it still took a lot of work to adapt it to our paradigm. We went through various options for the criteria that would create each profile. We played with different categories of information that would be provided. We changed the scale that each category would be presented on. And really it was just figuring out what would be the most understandable and realistic to the average person who might not have the most in-depth knowledge of criminal sentencing. Then further crafting each of the individual offender profiles proved to be a little bit more difficult as we went through the different criteria options as for what would constitute a more or less severe profile. And then also trying to make each of the 64 offender profiles unique was a challenge. Um, and as we drew from our conclusions, even though we feel that the task we created might not have been the best adaptation and thus that's why we're going back to the drawing board um, and redesigning it before our next round of data collection. And I have to say prior to this research experience I don't know that I really understood how much work goes into a study like this and how each study can often lead to a lot of new questions. So it was a really cool experience to uh, experience that and really learn what it's like to conduct a study such as this one. Great. Well you did a great job with it. So Thank you. Very happy.
uh, it, just one one last thing. Um, so I know on the page itself, we didn't have a lot of time to, to talk about this in the rundown, but um, I know you mentioned uh, some terms. Uh, Pre-registration is something that I saw in there and, and open science. Um, I was just wondering if you could tell us or tell people uh, a little bit about those because I think they're important and sometimes we're a little underappreciated. So what are those exactly and why did you incorporate them into your project? Yeah, so the open science framework is actually an open source project management tool that encourages and facilitates open collaboration and research. So by allowing researchers a platform to upload and make public all aspects of their projects from materials to data to analysis, the open science framework thus helps to increase the accessibility, integrity, and repercussions reproducibility of research. Um, Pre-registration is a part of the open science framework and it involves laying out your study's hypotheses, materials, method, and data collection and analyst plans prior to actually collecting your data. So this was something that we decided to complete in addition to the other open science framework um, capabilities. And by documenting your research plan through pre-registration prior to collecting your data. It helps to reduce researcher bias that can occur once you have your data in front of you, while also providing you and the other scientists with a clear record of the research choices you set out to follow and why you made the particular decisions that you did. Great, yeah, sounds like uh, best practices in science, which are always, <laughs> yeah. always good to follow. Definitely. Excellent. Well, yeah, thank you so much for taking us through uh, the project and uh, joining us today. I think this work is a really good example of the, the really nice um, collaborative student faculty uh, research that we have going on in the, uh, in the psychology department. Uh, so thanks again. And on behalf of the, the department uh, and uh, all of the Fairfield community, we thank you for taking some time to uh, sit with us and hear from Emma today. Thanks. Thanks.